Shalom everyone. Blessings and peace be on you. Today is a wonderful day. It's a day we continue to rejoice in the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Yeshua, our Messiah. I'm Claudia Morgan Sr., Apostle and Director of Living Waters Apostolic Healing Ministry. Today, I'm excited to be on. I'm excited to be on in this season, which is a very special time for us on God's sacred calendar. Today is the final day of the Feast of Trumpet, actually started on Friday sunset and will close at the end of the evening, this up this evening. And so um, I'm, I'm happy to be on to talk about the goodness of God and what this feast means to me. I pray it will be a blessing to you too. So, we are living in one of the most exciting times of our lives on God's sacred calendar. We are in the fall season as we enter the most holy days, the most holy high days. It is the season of the Feast of Trumpets or Rosh Hashanah, which is the Jewish New Year, and we are in the year 5781, which is very significant which is equivalent to the 2020, upcoming 2020 on the Gregorian calendar. This is a very exciting time for Living Waters Apostolic Healing Ministry, a ministry raised up by God himself. Um, as during this time and in this season, we are privileged to be celebrating our first anniversary. For the glory of God, we celebrate one year and we say, the devil is a liar. When the Spirit of the Lord revealed the time of the, of, for our ministry launch, um, he said, the last Sunday in the year 2019. No, I had no idea that the last Sunday in 2019 was being celebrated as a feast of trumpet or Rosh Hashanah. And even more, I had no knowledge that it was in his divine will for me to be consecrated as an apostle um, to the body of Messiah. You know, God weighs our past to finding out. We cannot figure it, so we leave it, yeah? So with that said, it, is a, it has been a great year. It has been a year of God's divine faithfulness, a year of divine revelations, a year of divine fulfillment of revelation, a year of God's protection, a year of his provision, a year of seeing people being healed physically and spiritually, a year of seeing people set free and delivered, a year of watching people who are after God's heart just growing in his grace. Indeed, it has been a year, a great year. I remember, you know, at the beginning of the year, the Spirit of the Lord revealed to me that for the ministry, it was going to be a year of victory. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. Indeed, it has been a year of victory. We have overcome much, and to God be the glory. You know, it has been, I, I'm, I'm so reminded you know, of the word that the Spirit of the Lord gave, that your appointment is not from man, but from God. And when you know you have the bucketive of heaven, nothing can harm you. Amen? Nothing will overpower you. So we're talking about time. We're in a, in a very sacred um, time on God's calendar. And God determines times and seasons. And we see that in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. God is the master of time. God can do all things in his time. God lives in eternity before he created time. He created mankind in a span of time. And in the fullness of time, he sent his, his son, Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah, at just the right time. And one day his son is coming back. Hmm? Uh, no wonder we're talking about the Feast of Trumpets. 
No man knows the moment or the hour when he will come, but we know he's coming back. We don't know the time or the date he will come, but he's going to come back in this time. And he's going to take us out of this time and we're going to live with him in eternity. Praise God. What a hope we have as people of God. So God has a time plan that he revealed for humanity. Yeah? But the enemy, the accuser of our souls, the opposer of God, is doing everything to block what God is doing in the lives of his people. Today, people of God, I want us to fully understand God's appointed time. And to understand God's appointed time in its truest sense, we need to go back to the book of Leviticus chapter 23, where the same Hebrew word for time is moed. And it is used to refer to the feast of the Lord or his appointed times. So in this chapter, Leviticus chapter 23, God revealed a time plan. He revealed the blueprint for man's redemptive plan in Yeshua Messiah, right? It was prophetically, it was prophetic for a time to come to be fulfilled in Yeshua or Messiah. And uh, what we're going to see through this time plan is how Yeshua totally will eventually totally fulfill, right? And um, God's appointed times. So he said to Moses in chapter 23 of Leviticus, um, chapter 1, he said to Moses, I, I just want to read it from here. He said to Moses, speak to the children of is speak to the Israelites and say to them, these are my appointed feasts, the appointed feasts of the Lord, which you are to proclaim as a sacred assemblies. Right. And they are supposed to be permanent ordinances for all generations to come. I must emphasize that these feast days are 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 not the Jewish people holy days. They are God's holy days for all people who come into covenant relationships through the blood of Yeshua, Jesus, our Messiah. So, understanding the feast days hold prophetic knowledge that is necessary for our to, to fulfill our walk with the Lord. Yeah, it is not meaningless walk. Right, the time and sequence. And, and sequence of these feast days reveal the overall protect, prophetic plan of God for man. You see, God is God is very intentional. He has a plan. He did not just put man here on the planet without a plan of knowing or a plan of understanding. Right. So with this, I want to encourage your heart never to listen to the lie of the enemy that says Jesus already fulfilled everything and everything is done away with. It is a lie from the pit of hell. Amen. You know, it is time we remove the blinkers. I believe we have been wearing blinkers for too long. It is time for us to see the light. It is time for the scales to be removed and that the truth of God's word be revealed to all people. So in a teaching I did recently, I made the point that the feast days fall into two seasons, the spring season and the fall season. So the spring seasons represent the fulfillment of the first set of feast days, which points to the first coming of Yeshua, our Messiah. So we look at Passover that speaks to his death, the Feast of Unleavened Bread, it speaks to his burial, the Feast of First Fruit, it speaks to his resurrection. And in these feast days, we experience God's peace for humanity. So 50 days after the resurrection, we had the Feast of Pentecost, which speaks to the outpouring of the Spirit in Acts chapter 2, right? We remember Yeshua 
talking to his um, disciples, his Talmudim, he said to them, do not leave Jerusalem. He said, tarry in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. Stay in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came because the disciples needed the power of God to go forth to teach the gospel. Amen. To, to share the gospel, he said to the Jews first and then to the Gentiles. So the whole world would be covered by the glory of God. So, so, so what we see happening on Pentecost is that we, we experience God's power. Amen. And all these feast days are fulfilled in his first coming. He came already. And they are all fulfilled. But the Bible speaks of a second coming. So the fall feast days basically points to Yeshua's second coming. All right? And they are not yet fulfilled. All right? They are future-based. And the feast, what we're looking at, is the Feast of Trumpet or Rosh Hashanah or the head of the year, which is being celebrated right now, which close at, the, um, at sunset this afternoon. This particular feast that points directly, it, it comes in line with um, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 52. And here we see the Apostle Paul writes that in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Hallelujah. Right? According to Paul, the event will unfold at the last trumpet, which is a specific reference to the last trumpet um, that we we that is that is is documented in Leviticus chapter 23, the, 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 the feast of trumpets. Amen. You see, the word of God connects. It, it, it is not, it connects. Yeah, it is, it aligns, and the word of God is true. So then there's a day, then there's a day, another feast um, day called the day of atonement, which is gonna come up later. To the end of of, of um of, of this month down to September 28th, right? And it is it, it is referred to as the most holy day on God's sacred calendar. It's the day of atonement or Yom Kippur, right? It is a time of repentance and introspection and returning to the Father. It is a time when we look deep into our souls. It is a time when we open up our souls like David did in Psalm 51, and we repent, we repent before God of everything wrong that we have done. It is a time of repentance. Amen. It is a time when, 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 when it is said that we ensure that our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Each of us need to make sure that our name is written there. So the Day of Atonement foreshadows the day when God will deliver his judgment upon his people, right? And then the final feast day, which is the Feast of Tabernacle or Sukkot, um, speaks to the eternal rest that we enter in to be with the Lord in eternity. Praise God. I'm, I'm just so excited about these days. I'm really just so excited about these times, these events. And it is a kind of... <laughs> It is really sad that so many people are missing the depth, the richness, the knowledge, and the power of the Word of God. So as we review the days, right, it is said that, so we see that on Rosh Hashanah, this or, or the Feast of Trumpets, our spirits, they are awakened by the blowing of the shofar. On the Day of Atonement, we see the blood of Yeshua, it cleanses us, right? And the Feast of Tabernacle, we experience the eternal rest we will have in the fullness of time, in time to come when we will rest forever with God in eternity. And in the, in the book of Revelation, we read that he will wipe away 
all tears from our eyes. There will be no more pain, no more death, no more suffering. Hallelujah. What a moment to rejoice in the Lord for his goodness and his mercies. So brothers and sisters, what we see right, happening right here is that um, we see clearly that God will not leave us hanging with uncertainties of his return. He provided a timeline. He provided the, blue, the blueprint. He provided the plan, the prophetic plan. But the enemy of our soul tries to rob us of that which belongs to us. All right? It is a time for us that as we observe what God is doing, that we wake up from our slumber and we see that the time of harvesting is at hand. Praise God. So um, I mentioned last Friday, September 18th to today, September sunset, the Feast of Trumpet is being celebrated. <clears throat> the Feast of Trumpet was um, on the first day of the seven months on the sacred calendar, which corresponds to the month of September, October on our calendar. I, I said that before, right? So the main purpose of the Feast of Trumpet really was to announce the arrival of the seven months in order for Israel to prepare for the Day of Atonement, which would come up a few days after, right? The seven month was special as it was the last month of God's appointed feast days to be celebrated because all the feast days now would fall between these two months. So the number seven, as we see and as we know, it speaks to perfection and completeness. And we can expect and anticipate great revelations and anointing to be released during these biblically appointed times. I've had many, many testimonies of what God has done, how he would, in the realm of the spirit, he would open up some visions and he would give some revelation of what is happening and what is to come. Amen? So, as the Feast of Trumpet is celebrated, the shofar is sounded. And the sounding of the trumpet or the shofar, it speaks to different point in time and meaning for the Jewish people. It was... It was a time, it was blown, and the shofar was blown in remembrance of the ram that was sacrificed in place of Isaac. Some of us, it is our favorite passage in the Bible because we, we tend to look at it of God's provision. And when we think of provision most times, we think of physical provision, but, but it it had deep prophetic meaning, which we are never supposed to overlook. The second point is that the shofar was sounded on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year. It was also to prepare the people for the Day of Atonement. And it was the, the shofar also signifies war and the coronation of a king. And it, it, it was also a means of waking those who were asleep who were in slumber, right? And it, 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 it also reflects a, sh a shadow of the, it, I'm sorry, it reflects also the resurrection, the blowing of the trumpet reflects the resurrection of the dead, as we read in um, from 1 Corinthians chapter 50. We, we, it speaks to the gathering of the elect. Yeshua said, from the four wings of the earth, he's, he will gather his elect, his elect people. And when we see the, the word elect in the Bible or chosen, it speaks specifically to Israel. And then it also speaks of the coronation of the king of kings in his kingdom, the king of kings and the Lord of lords. People of God, there is a lot to learn. From the scripture, there's a lot to learn from the word of God. We just need to dig into it. We just need to get into the word and understand the meaning because everything there has, has meaning. Everything is prophetic. It points to Yeshua. And the Apostle Paul writes, he said that they were the feast. They were a shadow of things to come. But the fullness is in Christ. The fullness is in our Messiah. The fullness is in him. 
Amen. And it is in him that we live, we move, and we have our being, our own fullness. So, people of God, during this time, and we would have heard it time and time again, during this time of God's appointed time, we're actually sitting in under open heavens. We are at the place right now where the Spirit of God is being poured out into the lives of believers. The Spirit of the Lord is being poured out, you know, for those who have this great desire and this great need for the fullness of God in their lives. It is a, it, it, we are in a time um, where fresh anointing is released from God's throne room during the fall feast days. And it actually prepares us to enter into the new year, how we begin the new year, which is Rosh Hashanah. And as I mentioned before, we are in the year 5781, and um, it is very significant. And the greetings from the Jewish context is that it will be a sweet year. So that is the blessing that is being pronounced on people each year. May you have a sweet year. And may you have a sweet ear as you listen to this, to this teaching as we talk about the Feast of Tabernacles. I want to make a point that before I close, and it is that when you study from the Hebrew context, we understand, and we have said it over time, that it is so dynamic, the Hebrew understanding is so dynamic. And so even as we look at the number 80, it has value. It is very significant because the number 80 is associated with the letter P-E-Y. And the symbol of that letter is a picture of the mouth. Right. So we are now in we now move into 81. And as we look at one, you know, we think of. God, the one God, we think of Echad. You know, I remember the night when the Spirit of the Lord revealed the word Echad to me, that he is one. The Lord our God is one. And so if we were to put these numbers together, we are actually seeing that this year is the mouth. It's the, it's the mouth of the year when we speak and we are speaking to God. We are speaking about him. We are declaring his name. Right, we are declaring his name as um as we are instructed to to speak to him. There was a time when the children of Israel they were they they were instructed to speak to the rock, but they did not speak to the rock, they hit the rock. We may have been hitting the rock for too long. I believe in this time the spirit of the Lord is saying that he has given us a mouth. And we are to use our mouth and we are to speak on his behalf. Amen. We are to speak on his behalf. The devil is trying to silence us from speaking thus set the word of God. That's his plan. Yeah. He is doing everything to silence the people of God. Right. But we are called to speak. We are called to make declaration. He has given us the authority to use our mouth and to speak thus said the word of God. Let us go to the book of Joel chapter 2 verse 1. This is what he says. He says, blow the trumpet in Zion. We are in the feast of tabernacle and the spirit of the Lord is saying to us, his people, those whom he have called, though those whom he has chosen for a purpose. He said, blow the trumpet of God in Zion. Amen. I remember fully well the night when he allowed me, when he took my spirit from my body and he allowed me to hear the blowing of the shofar. He gave me instruction. I heard the blowing of the shofar. I didn't understand that today I would be here declaring thus set the word of God. Amen. In a different, in basically a different way. But we are called to blow the trumpet of God. We are called to sound the alarm. We are called to make a noise. We are called, hallelujah, praise God. We are called not to be silent. He said, sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble for the Lord is coming. 
and his coming is at hand. So we understand why, as in this season here, we use our mouth to speak on God's behalf. We use our mouth to speak, thus set the word of Almighty God. We use our mouth to speak without fear, without fear, without fear, without any form of contradiction, because we're speaking, thus set the word of God. So today, people of God, as we move into this new year, this is a time when we speak to God. It is a time when we speak not only to him on behalf of the people, but when we speak to the people on his behalf. Because he's always given a word for his people. Amen? This is a year, it's a time to speak to the rock. Amen? The rock of ages. It's a time we have access right now to speak. Now is the time to speak. Well, we're in a time when we are stricken by the COVID pandemic and everywhere we go, people are wearing masks, a physical mask. But I want to say to us today, people of God, get in the realm of the spirit and remove your mask. Take off your mask. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about the physical mask, which is a part of the, 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 the social the practices in, 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 in what is believing, stopping the, 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 um, the spreading of the virus. I'm not talking about that mask. I'm talking about the mask that we are wearing. I'm talking about the mask that we are wearing that is that is preventing us from speaking thus said the word of God. The spirit of the Lord is saying in this time, this is a prophetic word from the spirit of God. He is saying, remove your mask and speak thus said the word of God. Blow the trumpet of God in Zion. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The enemy is trying to silence God's people. But I say to you today, I declare to you today, speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. Speak to the rock. You see, it is when you speak to the rock. It is when we speak, people of God. It is when we come into this relationship with God. It is when we come into the rock. That's what um, when Moses wanted to experience his glory. When Moses wanted to see his face, he said, Moses, you can't see my face. But there's a place I can put you into the rock. I can hide you in the rock and my glory will pass by. Amen. God wants to reveal his glory. He wants to reveal his majesty. He wants to reveal his power. But he is saying, come into the rock. Come into the rock. It is when we are in the rock that we're going to experience abundant grace for this new beginning, for this new time we're in. It is when we are in the rock, people of God, that we're going to experience fresh anointing. It is when we are in the rock and when we're speaking to the rock that we're going to experience fresh oil. Hallelujah. It is when we are in the rock and we are speaking to the rock that we are going to experience the transformation that we need in our lives, the transformation in the body of Christ. Eh? It is when we speak to the rock, we access revelation that will help us to advance into the future. Yeah, That is going to help our walk to be elevated. I'm going to share and then call a situation I had last night. And that, you know, the enemy cannot, cannot abort that which God is doing. So last night as I slept, yeah, in my sleep, I saw a humongous black statue appeared before me. This statue was in the form of a kind of Roman soldier. Tall, humongous, black appeared before me in my sleep but guess what the word of god says when the enemy riding like a flood the spirit of the lord lift a standard what did god do and i believe this is a confirmation of the word that god has given me i believe this was a, the very confirmation of the word that we must remove our mask and declare the word of god hallelujah amen so the enemy, when he appeared that way, he wanted me to be fearful. 
when he appeared in that form like a Roman soldier, he wanted me to be silent. But God opened my mouth in that moment to declare the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. He opened my mouth in that moment to declare the blood of Yeshua. He opened my mouth in that moment to declare the set the word of God. Hallelujah. He opened my mouth. And he is saying to us in this season, open your mouth. This is the year of the mouth. Open your mouth. Speak thus set the word of God. It's we are in the year 5781. And the one represents God, Eckhart. He will be with you. He promised never to leave you, people of God. I'm just excited. I'm just excited about what God is doing. And this season, the enemy cannot silence you. Remove your spiritual mask. Take off your mask and be armored in God. There's a work to get done, people of God. We're at the end of time. We're at the close of time. Many are dying in sin. Many are on their way to hell because we continue to break God's holy commandment. So we need to take off the mask and speak. Open your mouth and speak with authority to set the word of the Almighty God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. It's a time, people, it's a time to change our mindset. It's a time to change our mindset and to step into our purpose, step into God's plan, God's plan for your life. It's a time when we need to come and align ourselves with God's biblical calendar. It's a time when we need to get out of the darkness, come into the light. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy. My God. It's time for us to partner with God. Come into this. His biblical calendar. The word is laid out. There is no shadow of turning with him. He changes not. He is the I am that I am. The eternal God. The God who spoke from the beginning of time. Yeah? And as we prepare ourselves, people of God, in this time, the blowing of the trumpet, we are moving on to the time of the Day of Atonement. Let us be ready. Let us be prepared. Let us not take it for granted. And I'm going to encourage you. I'm going to encourage you to... I'm going to encourage you to... to um, to, 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 to get into the word. I want to refer you again to Leviticus chapter 23. I pray that as you read the word of God, that the word will make great deposit in your heart. And that God will give you revelation and understanding of who he is and what he's doing in this time and in this season. He said, open your mouth. If all you can do is pray, pray. There is much to pray about. Pray for what is happening in the world. Pray for what is happening in your country. Pray for what is happening in your communities. Pray for what is happening in your church. Pray, open your mouth, pray. Calls heaven attention to what is happening. Pray, open your mouth, declare the Lord. Open your mouth in this season. And pray and speak. Thus said the word of God. Declare his name. Doesn't matter what giants come at you. It doesn't matter what, what form they come in. Hallelujah. In the realm of the spirit, God is going to give you sight beyond sight and vision beyond vision because the enemy cannot and will not prevail over God's people at any time. Hallelujah. Sometimes I just get excited about the Lord. Sometimes. I don't know how to contain myself. Sometimes I don't know how to behave myself. But I can tell you that when the Spirit of God opens up what is happening in the realm of the Spirit, that's another thing. Amen? Amen. I pray that in this time, as we come to the close of this day, 
that he will continue to celebrate his goodness. And that you will have a blessed year. That you are about entering the best time of your life, the best year of your life. Yeah, you're going to tell me that COVID is around, COVID or no COVID. You have entered the best time of your life and there is more to come. I pray that you'll be blessed. Amen. And so I'm going to also ask you that as you listen to these teachings that you will like and that you will subscribe to the channel and that you will share with your contacts. You see, this is the word of truth, you know. This is not hype. This is the word of truth. This is the word of God and nobody can resist or contradict. So I ask you, please share with me and may you be blessed. I pray that this week will be a very, very productive week for you as you spend time in the presence of Yeshua, our Messiah, our Lord, and our Savior. Thank you for listening. Be blessed. Amen.